So there's lots of different threats that can occur. So things that can go wrong in your experiment to make it no longer valid. So here we're just going to talk about some of the things you need to keep your eye on to uh, keep your experiments good and solid. So in psychology and a lot of other fields too, um, there's threats to what's called construct validity. And basically the construct is what it is you're trying to measure. So you might be interested in how wisdom changes over time. You might be interested in stress, how stress changes over time, something like that. You need to operationalize your construct. So what that means is you have to have some kind of like formal definition and like formal way of measuring your construct. So to operationalize your construct, you would try to make some kind of like say questionnaire for wisdom. So if you score really high on the questionnaire, you'll have a high score for wisdom. And it's possible that the way that you operationalize the variable, the, me the way that you build your like little test to score it could be wrong. And that's where there's issues with construct validity. So basically you're claiming to measure wisdom, but in fact, you're really not, you might not be doing a very good job. So when you try to measure wisdom, if you have a bad test for it to define it, then you're going to have problems. Stats to, uh, threats to statistical conclusion validity. So we make um, kind of like basic conclusions after the end of our studies, like were there differences between here? Yes or no? Are they? significant differences. So those are the kind of questions you ask yourself. And sometimes due to the way that the experiment's set up, it's possible for the statistics to uh, give you the wrong idea and wrong final impression. So one example I like to say is <clears throat> it's a uh, math class and there are third graders and fifth graders. Okay. If you give them a really easy test, something that's at like kindergarten level, the third graders and the fifth graders would perform exactly the same. And your results would show that there's no difference in math scores between third and fifth graders. But the problem is the test is way too easy because everybody got 100%. If you made the test at a fifth grade level, the fifth graders would outperform the third graders. So basically you'd be making a false claim that there's no differences between the third and fifth graders. And this can also happen the other way, where the test is the test is way too difficult. They're, they're given an astrophysics exam for seniors in college, and the fifth and third graders do exactly the same because they have no, no idea what's going on. And again, you would claim that there's no differences in math skills, but really the test was either too easy or too difficult. And the next two are kind of like larger scale and there's lots of different threats to each one of these both internal and external and there's different ones for statistical um, validity too I'm just basically getting these main concepts out there know that there's different threats I'm just bringing up some some of them an example so threats to internal validity so basically um, what this means is that there's some kind of threat to the experiment that you're using and something that goes on inside uh, the laboratory inside the experiment that you're doing causes some kind of problem and typically it's due to another confounding variable meaning that the claim that you have basically one thing changes another is not actually true because of something else so <clears throat> in correlational research it's common that <clears throat> you you would find relationships between some things that like don't really cause each other like for instance there are more shark attacks in the summer um, and there's more ice cream consumption in the summer, but the two don't cause each other. Okay, so there's some kind of threat um, going on there. And that's a problem with internal validity. And that's something that's going on um, inside the experiment itself. So there's several other ways that <clears throat> things can go wrong. So some kind of confounding variables. And one of these confounding variables or issues that's often present in what are called longitudinal studies, where participants have to come in again and again and again is the participants that decide to stop participating in the study they tend to be different than the participants that stay just in like like a slew of different variables so like it might be the performance that they have it might be that the treatment's not working for them and because you're losing a sample that's non-random what's called systematic it's called systematic attrition then your study is going to um, not get the right results. 
So if you have some kind of, say, intervention program that's 30 days where you have to, like, exercise and, like, eat a bunch of food for weight loss, um, it's likely that the people that aren't getting the benefits or think that it's too hard would drop out. And those that enjoy it and are getting lots of benefits at it would stay to the end. And say they had a questionnaire at the very end to say how much you like the program. The people who stayed at the very end would have very nice things to say. And those would be the only people that would get their scores. Because the people that dropped out, they're out of the study. They're uh, not there at all. So there's problems going on inside the study. Uh, threats to external validity, on the other hand, this kind of flips the coin. And instead of talking about what's going on like in the laboratory with the independent variables and the dependent variables and other things that are going on, it's basically asking you the question, well, did what happened in the laboratory, does that hold up outside of the laboratory? Or are we generalizing too much? Is this something that wouldn't happen um, outside of the laboratory? So <clears throat> something to consider is like, say, some kind of social experiment. There's some kind of social experiments that you probably can't do a very good job of emulating inside a laboratory. Like if you think about so, something like the like having a boss and your boss yelling at you, how that makes you feel. Like that's probably not something that's easy easily done at least inside the laboratory. So that could be a like one of the things that could be a threat. But <clears throat> you could also have problems with external validity if you're trying to um, talk about like use one population and then try to apply it to another. And <clears throat> that tends to be um, common. Um, like in the history of psychology, um, the vast majority of the population has been uh, white, educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic. And uh, that stands for uh, weird, which is down here. And basically, <clears throat> because, the because the sample, so these are the people you choose for your study, tend to more likely be one of these characteristics, it's possible that uh, this population doesn't generalize to other populations. So what happened inside the lab with the sample isn't going to replicate outside of the lab with a different population. So that's this, this idea that what happened in the lab, even though things went well, you had high internal validity, meaning you controlled your, uh, your independent variable and it had an effect on the dependent variable, give, meaning like you manipulated the amount of sugar you gave kids, which changed the amount of activity they had, so the IV and the DV. Um, there was no confounding variable, good job. But if you only use kids of, um, you know, say a certain age, it's probably not going to translate to other kids. And those are the kind of things that you need to be concerned about. So yeah, this is just meant to be kind of like a basic um, idea, understanding of these kind of like more complicated terms, which are threats to the ability for the experiment to do exactly what it is that it's supposed to do. And uh, feel free to leave any comments for any kind of questions you have. If there's um, something that you still aren't sure about, um, I'll be able to get to it. Have a good night.